All right. So I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 3, but I want to give you a background. So let me, say, let me start by saying this quickly. No, so as a pastor, I'm very, I have, I have huge concerns. And one of my concerns is this, that when you come to church, as a pastor, you find people that really, really love Jesus. Like you know when you talk to them that these people really, really love Jesus. But you also see the struggle in their lives. So also, it, it's, it's confusing because it's almost as if the pastors preach this or the Bible say this. But when you look at these people and you look at their lives, their life does not represent what God can do or what the Bible can teach or what the Bible teaches rather. They are frustrated. So God is saying to them that, you know, you can get a great husband, you can get a great wife, you know, you can have a great marriage, but it seems in reality that they are divorced, that they are trying to get married, and that's where they are. For some other people, the challenge that they have has to do with them. Um, the challenge that they have has to do with some of their health. God says, I can heal you, but you're struggling with a kidney problem. They're struggling with a fertility issue. They're struggling with... Um, uh, let me read a testimony to you, just, you know, just because I remember that testimony now. You know, forgive me. Uh, my husband and I got married December 2016. Immediately, we started trying to have kids, only to realize a year, a year later, upon series of interviews, this five years ago, that my husband had a low sperm count, which made it difficult for us to conceive naturally. However, he was placed on different medication but there was no improvement of any sort. He was placed on medication. There was no improvement of any sort. He says, by April 2019, we were advised to consider assisted reproductive technology. We opted for the IUI, which also failed. Let me say at this point that the process was frustrating for me. We gave up trying at the hospital after the failed IUI. He said, we just gave up. He said, from that period, May to June 2019, we just resorted to being spiritual. Towards the end of last year, 2020, we increased our commitment to the next level prayer. Pastor Bologi's message on the first of Sunday spoke about moving in the right direction for your goals. We knew it was time to revisit the hospital. To the glory of God and to our utmost surprise, my husband did his sperm count test again in three different hospitals. And <laughs> he, he said... And my husband's result came out, his numbers and all parameters had increased significantly. We had to repeat the test at three different clinics just to confirm. They all came back the same. What medications could not correct? The dejection of five years, all resolved by the power of God. God did it. Amen. I, I'm, I'm always blown away when I hear all this testimonies from next level all right so i i it was the it was a preaching that took me there but let me get back to my preaching yeah, let me someone says that if you have faith don't go to the hospital at all i think that's also dumb yeah someone says if you have faith don't use drugs at all so it was satan that gave the doctors the drugs you know some things people say someone says, why go to the hospital when you when, when, if you know you're healed sometimes it's just good to know what you're addressing Sometimes that's how simple it is. I just know what I'm addressing. I just know what I'm fighting. It's difficult to fight blindly. Okay, let's go back to the scriptures. So, yeah, back to the teaching. So, when I teach the Bible, I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned because you have all those people that really believe the Bible. They're excited. But in reality, they don't have what the Bible says. So, it's either the Bible is lying, the pastors are lying, or there's something else that is wrong. I'm very concerned. So you have people that really come to church and pray and they really believe that they can do better financially but after a long period, they don't do better financially. And some of those people really and genuinely become frustrated. Sometimes you have very pretty sisters or very handsome brothers that believe that I could just walk over my marital destiny. And that thing as simple as it is never happens for them. Sometimes it applies to a job. Sometimes it applies to having children. Sometimes it's a health issue. The common thing you see is that there is a frustration, and I don't know if you've experienced it before, that God says he can do this, 
but what god says it can do is not what is the evidence in my life let me tell you what i would love about my father i love a father that cannot afford something and i know he cannot afford it that's why we are suffering than a father that can afford something but will not do it for us and that's the way many people see god god is a person that can afford something but he will never give it to you and many people have that resentment against god in fact when they pray you hear things like god and you're looking at me like this and god you're watching me like this and god see what you're doing to me and so as a pastor one of the things i try to do is to just go into the bible and see what the bible will have to say what can we learn more that can help us be more effective in this area so let's turn our bibles to hebrews chapter 3 hebrews chapter 3 hebrews chapter 3 in verse 17 the bible says in hebrews chapter 3 verse 17 but with whom was he grieved that who was god grieved you for 40 years was he not with them that sinned whose carcass fell in the wilderness verse 18 says this to whom please i need more volume on this microphone I, i'm trying not to stretch my voice please thank you to whom to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believe not so let's keep reading 19 so we see that they could not enter therein because of unbelief so let me backtrack on that he says they could not enter therein because of unbelief so this talks about the children of israel when they were leaving egypt and they were moving into where they were moving into the um into the promised land in the old testament the promised land was a physical location that was called canaan land in the new testament the promised land is the promises that we have in christ jesus and we entering into the promised land is we receiving the manifestation of those promises that is what the promised land is to us in the new testament now jesus the bible was teaching something very significant he says why didn't they eventually enter to the promised land so for them it was a physical land and god says because of their unbelief for us why are people not able to enter into the promise the fullness of the promise of god either when it concerns their career either when it concerns their marriage either when it concerns their finances either when it concerns their job how come they're not able to enter into the fullness of the promise of god and the reason why they're not able to enter into the fullness of the promise of god is this is because of the bible says their unbelief now that's very challenging because when you read the story some of them said the wrong things some of them seen went into idolatry but guess what when god looked at everything they saw from his perspective he said the number one reason why they could not step into the promised land was because in their heart there was unbelief but because unbelief was there it manifested in different things so the one that went into idolatry went into idolatry because of the fundamental problem of the unbelief the one that went into um, wrong speaking began to speak wrong because of the unbelief why am i saying this to you one of the things you must realize is this everything you want in life are outcomes either you want a good marriage it's an outcome either you want to be blessed financially it's an outcome either you want some kind of level of influence an outcome what you can do is to, is your input that determines your outcome so let me tell you how this works so this is what happens god says it's your it's your belief so your belief watch this now your belief affects your behavior your behavior affects your performance your performance affects your outcome your belief affects your, beha your, your, your behavior your behavior affects your performance your performance affects your outcome so most times when people have an outcome it's because of the input in their performance but the input in their performance is because of what what they believe let me give you a good example so many of you are married here you will get home and your wife will bring a plate of food to you and you will say something like honey i can't finish this food have you said that before and when you say i can't finish this food have you noticed that have you noticed that when you say i cannot finish this food what happens next you you will not be able to finish it but if she, if she prevails on you, you can actually finish your food question 
how do you know what you can finish or not finish it's exactly what you believe it's exactly what you believe you look at the food and you kind of gauge it and you say i cannot finish this food it's it's just what you believe within within your system so what do you believe so there's a way you eat no you will not finish it there's a way you eat so when you know the food is too small there's a way you also respond because you know what the food is too small but it's all about your belief there is something about your belief that determines your performance and your performance affects your outcome glory to god because most of us are trying to change our outcome and we're trying to use our faith but the re where it's going to start from is this we have to change our input to change our outcome but to change the input we have to change what we believe unfortunately when it comes to church in the church world people come to church and see what other people are saying and see what other people are doing and they copy the examples but they do not copy the belief system so they are not able to reproduce the result even though they do what they do let me give another example this is very powerful. I was watching a video by Bishop Oedipo. And Bishop Oedipo was talking about when they moved to Canaan Land Otter, that large church auditorium. And he said, one of the nights when they moved there, the roof was not yet done. The roof was not yet done, just the auditorium was done. He said, I was preaching at night. It was one of their special services. He said that um, as he was preaching at night, next thing happened, um, next thing happened as he was preaching at night, rain began to fall. He said, as rain began to fall, because where he was the state was not covered there was no ceiling there other places were covered he said all the pastors kind of ran towards the back hid under the pavilion he said he finished preaching and he was asking them now what was wrong they said it was raining he said it was raining he said i did not know it was raining he said i was soaked in the rain i didn't know it was raining he said because in my mind i was under a ceiling that's the power of belief he said in my mind he said i was even asking them why are you people going under the pavilion he said it's not as if i did not feel the rain but i just felt that he said the ceiling i felt over my head that it was done the reality of the ceiling was so superior that i could not sense the freedom in my body that's what belief is so the bible says this when you see these people that fell and died in the wilderness he said the reason why they died in the wilderness was that fundamentally they did not believe they would live a free life in the promised land because they did not believe they would live a free and worldly life in the promised land guess what in the wilderness they began to exhibit behaviors that will cut them off and that's the power of belief the power of belief is this you begin to exhibit behaviors that will just cut you off very very powerful very very powerful so let me give an example so there are people that are praying about something but they believe something else but guess what what you believe you will begin to act consistently what you believe and that thing will lead to a cut off i'll give an example let, let, let's read something else mark chapter 11 let's read mark chapter 11. let's read mark chapter 11. this is very powerful the bible says in verse 21 this is the case of the father that brought his child to jesus and he asked his child and he asked the father and said how long is it ago that this came to him how long has this child been sick notice the question how long has this child been sick and he said of a child this sickness started when he was a child look at the next verse verse 22 mark chapter 9 verse 22 the bible says often times it cast him into the fire and into the water and to destroy him you see let me stop there quickly here i don't know if you see it's on the screen good let me stop there quickly here the bible says that jesus christ said how long has he been then the man said he's of a child then he's going to say it cast him into the fire into the water question who asked him for details one of the major problems i see is this when people go through problems they become more problem focused than miracle focused are you hearing me that's one of the things i've seen one of the things i've seen is that when you listen to them you will begin to hear why things are not what you ask someone that have his business is a oh, business how will business work from end covid to no, no money from no money to this and this and this but the question is how is business what happens to us most of the time is that once you have a problem for a long time 
you can become so absorbed in that problem you don't see a solution again you don't see an answer again all you see is the mountain jesus christ asked this man he said how long has the child been sick he went into details of what was happening what was happening was not what was asked it was asked how long has this child been sick you ask a single lady you say how far with marriage you say that ah he said am i going to marry myself he said i didn't know who will marry he said when there was movement at least we met guys he said now there's covid we can't meet anybody how can we find such marry me the question was not that and is there covid or not we just ask you how far with marriage but because your problem has become so magnified in your mind you begin to see everything through the lens of impossibility they say how far with the funding he said ah who will give you money this ninja nobody helps anybody nobody ask you about nigeria they ask you how far with your funding but the cause you are so focused on the problem you define all of your experiences by where you are not by what they are and it's unfortunate but this is how we are and the more your mind is filled with the challenges you go through the more you define your life by the problems you go through your capacity to have faith to be highly shrunk see what the bible says here the bible says this it says in verse 21 and the, it says how long has how long has this come to him and the father said of a child and without any more questions he began to answer oftentimes he cast him into the fire and oftentimes into the water and to destroy him but if you can do anything have compassion or not now look at that look at the next line there's no way you can focus on negativity and have faith look at this he says if you can do anything so the man came to jesus christ and it was a if thing he says if you can do what he was doing was that you know what i i can't come and kill myself if he wants to do anything do it he says if you can do anything have compassion and help us what did jesus christ do of course jesus christ threw the ball back at him okay said, that's not how he works here because what happens is this with the way you think with the way you perspective you have you can't have faith he says if you can do anything if you can do anything help us have compassion and what did just christ say the next verse verse 23 and jesus said unto him the same if that he used just christ picked that if he said he, you said if right he said if you can believe he says if you can believe what will happen he says all things are possible to him that believe it he then says if you shall believe all things are possible to him that pray it he didn't say if you shall believe all things are possible that comes to church he says all things are possible to the person that believes what determines what is possible to you financially what determines what is possible to your business what determines what's possible in your career it's not what they said it's what you can believe did you notice in this verse there's nothing about being a christian or being born again there that's why people that are not born again operate this through very well he didn't say if you're born again christian he said if you shall believe there are people that i'm telling you the way they invest in their business you know they don't believe in their business i just told you a story everybody was running around the, the pavement bishop said i could he said i was I, I don't know why they were running he said if i was wet at all it was the dew of heaven that touched my body he said it was the dew of heaven that touched my body he says you can i know what doctor said about the impossibility of your medical condition but he says if you can believe all things are possible to him that believe it you know why because the first thing is that the believing will affect you most people have found out over time most people that claim they believe at the breakdown of it they are excited you did hear the testimony next level the woman said i believe i was pregnant he said i was seeing blood he said i believe i was pregnant he said i saw the blood for a number of days i went to test in the hospital the doctors confirmed i'm pregnant if you can believe because what belief does is a superior law of faith it superimposes on the situation so what happens is this let me tell you what happens what happens is this people play a lot of religion people play a lot of things in church so they just come and a lot of people are praying but this if you can pray all things are possible let me tell you something then eh? i know we're praying but a lot of people are praying about things they don't believe can happen to them that's the truth 
a lot of people are praying about things they don't believe can happen to them when you hear what they say about their career you will know that this thing that says i'm the head i'm not the tail in any bank is just bluff bluff you will understand because we come to church oh yeah declare i'm the head i'm not the tail i'm a bubble is not behind it oh ragata, ragata. they will not scabash you know that kind of thing but when you hear their conversation in normal life you will know that uh these guys are going nowhere and it says all things are possible to him that believe it there's a way when people how do i know you believe belief is not what you say <laughs> let me tell you something when you believe we see it when someone says i'm believing for this my brother you're not believing you know why the real belief is subconscious you don't even believe consciously it's just who you are it's just who you are when you see people that believe it's just you when people believe let me tell you something have you seen a guy that knows he can catch girls you will never hear that i believe i can get the girl nothing like that go for a party the belief will come out it will just leave you people as if i talk you'll say hey baby what's up now you want to come you know because the belief produces self-confidence so the one that is still saying that i can't let's bet 200 naira, i'll go i'll go that one has not mastered the job the one that believes in the miss he doesn't even need for you to bet someone said what does it mean to believe to believe is one thing certainty you are certain bishop said i just i didn't know why they were running away you're certain although you have not seen it so <laughs> let me give an example yesterday during the um, I, we had a special smaller meeting we have a breakthrough group for people that we have concentrated prayers for a next level it, it takes place every quarter so i had a meeting with them yesterday and um one lady said something that touched me she said nobody in my family among they're all girls i've gotten married three girls he said when i stay here in your teaching he said the problem was that i could not even see myself married this girl should be about 30 years old he said i could not even see i've never had a dream before like ah you know i i was in wedding gown i, I could not even paint a picture <laughs> when she said that i knew she had big problems you know why once your belief is not working your prayer cannot work are you here somebody no that's so weak are you here somebody you know what she did very smart she'd be listening to the messages she said i went on a stroll and i began to try wedding dresses he said the first time i wore the wedding dress half of me felt very happy half of me very very weird i said the half of you felt happy is your natural desire that's what you want the wetness is the state of your heart saying that that thing cannot happen to you that's why you feel weird and i told her i said you must go back and keep wearing wearing wedding dresses oh i said why until your mind wears the wedding dress and is comfortable your body cannot wear it i said your mind must wear the wedding dress comfortably and the reason why is this the principle of breakthrough until you break in you can't break out that's the principle of breakthrough until you break it and listen to me many of us are doing things on the outside and when you're doing things on the outside so you're saying they say you do this you do that so you're trying all sorts no sir the first place to try is on the inside listen to me when you see people that god answers their prayer you will know when they pray they don't have to shout to even when you just say pray one minute prayer in their language it will show that the god answers their prayer let me give an example i came this morning now i say let's go ahead and thank god and what did i say i say thank god for specific things he has done within the last few days you know why because in my mind he has done some things in the last few days but the people that don't know the legends be praying because if they say be specific they are afraid that there's nothing to be specific about I, I don't have to rehearse it it's because i don't know how you pray and you don't receive answers it's very abnormal what are you doing in prayer you just pray 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 see you don't understand many of you your belief system is so awkward you believe things that are not even great how do you believe that you pray and you don't answer prayers that you've prayed all these years and there's nothing you have seen as a sign that god answers prayer it's an abnormally and unfortunately because that is what you believe that is the kind of result you have up till yesterday i have something to thank god for up to this morning I, I i just oh lord thank you because uh, because i remember i said lord thank you so when i thank god i don't say thank god for everything no i know exactly what i'm thanking him for 
when you see that their prayers are not answered they don't even get specific you know why there's a fear if i get first speaking i'll be embarrassed and what happens is that they keep copying what other people are doing they keep copying what people are doing so they're like the seven sons of skiva you know there's the story in the bible the seven sons of skiva went to meet a man that was demon possessed you know why they went in seven they were already they already knew that they would deal with them so they needed encouragement that's how they knew it. i'm telling you you will hear people say no 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 no. that business don't worry now just put something small in case you lose it in case you look at it in case you lose it so you're already planning for failure before it happens so the seven sons of skiva went and when they went there watch what they said we are joining the name of Jesus that, that paul preached can you imagine they cannot address the demon in the name of jesus christ by a from a place of personal responsibility they said in the name of jesus that paul preaches eventually the demon said paul i know peter i know who are you because that's what church people do we keep saying what others are saying we keep doing what others are doing but the very belief that we cannot see we cannot embrace it and that's where the power of transformation is all things are possible to him that believe it it starts from when you believe there are many single girls that are here you are praying to be married yet you don't think you can get married how do i know i see the messages you send me when you want to be honest you know you say pastor who can marry me i'm telling you the truth because in your heart in your heart you know that nobody can marry you and until you see that thing on the inside let me tell you something some of you are praying i'm praying for career you say in my field in banking i'm the head i'm on the tail i will come out on the top in this uba or diamond bank let me tell you something there the way it works is this those that will become the head of the bank they know themselves because they believe has affected their behavior there's a way they behave in the bank saying that we are the future the reason why they think that the future is what their belief system has affected their behavior but you you don't even know who the directors are because there's no need to know them glory to god believe in see your belief determines your performance how many of you have gone to buy a car you walk into a car lot there are cars ranging from 150 million to 2.5 you don't even see the one over 50 million you don't even know they're there you just gradually move towards the 2.2 2.1 area you know say how much is this how much is that is when your friend told you that uh, there are cars for 100 million you say, there are cars there for 100 million how come i didn't see it because you don't believe they were speaking to you your mind cannot attract it your mind cannot even recognize it they even say sir come and test this car you say no 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 i'm not going for this car i'm going back this car they, they, because the, the point see can you see how your mind begins to withdraw you from experiences and this is a very powerful principle he says all things are possible to him that believe it there are many of you that have marital crisis the number one reason why you have marital crisis is this you have never seen a peaceful home that's all it's something you want but not something you have seen someone says how do i know if i believe it please this is how you know when you believe two things will happen the picture of what you believe will be very clear and the path to achieve it will be very clear once you don't have those two things you don't believe sir how do i know that the bible says that the one that withereth is like the sea is that the wind tossed by the sea let not that man think it will what receive anything of the lord so for you not to have clarity that this is what i want and this is how i will get it your belief is not complete let me give you a natural example did you see what happened with uba stb stb and the same thing access bank when stb and access bank they were tiny banks just about 20 years ago but they kept on saying we are global banks we are global banks african biggest bank the day stb bought uba we all froze so much so that when access bank was small when you walk there there was a work culture you walk in access bank ah they're like ah you they were a small bank oh but you walk in access bank ah when there was nothing that belief created cultural sorry corporate value and corporate behavior glory to god i said glory to god 
He says, all things are possible to him that believe it. You believe that your business will do well. You cannot even invest in your business. You think it will do well. You don't understand. If you cannot believe enough to invest in your business, how do you think the angels will invest in your business? There's a way. You, there's a way. It's just all things. And, and this is the thing. Most of us want this. But we believe this. Unfortunately, it's not what we want that happens. It's what we believe that happens. When you hear me say that we're starting a fourth service creating overflow, what does that tell you? It's because in my heart, I've seen a larger, an explosion that is not here physically. So I'm responding out of my belief system. When you believe something, you behave it. Most people think to behave to believe it's a strategy, but the real belief is that you believe something, you, be, you behave it. Let me give an example. Um, Shagun, where are you? Gerard, where are you? Shagun, Gerard, stand up. Um, Vicky, come. Who is that? Abe. Um, anybody I just remember is, is our name. Just be giving me names. What? Just give anybody's name. Huh? What? Just call a name. Like they, don't stand behind them, just stand. All of you just stay where you are. Just stay, go, go, just stay where you are again. Once I call you, you just march to the left, to the right. Lie they, just go. Lie they, come. Shagon. Gerald. Abe. Vicky. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can stay where you are. How do you know it's your name that I just called? How do you know it's your name? The only reason why they know is their name is this. I've only heard it over time. They believe it was their name. And they began to respond to it. You only respond to what you know you are. What does that mean? If you know you are success, so your new name is success, success come. What happens? You will begin to take actions that will gravitate towards success. Because that's what you believe. Listen, the reason why people, and this is the reason why you are saying that, go for this, go for that. The reason why those are difficult is this. You don't know who you are. You need to be told. Sir, when you go to a toilet, you look for where the right trust is, not where they put skirt. Is that not true? When they put skirt, do you go there and find every other? Because it does not attract you. You know you belong to the chosen element. Is that not true? Because you know who you are. What does that mean in real life? Once you know you're a success, once you go to trust that element where success are, you go there. Once you go to failure element, where power, where other things don't go there. You don't branch there because that's not my area. Thank you, sir. You don't. There's nothing in my life that can make me go to the toilet with skirt in front of it. It's not a matter. Someone says, um, when I get there, I believe, I'm trying to believe I will, yeah, I will get. I don't have to believe it. The reason why is that there is a self image that has been put in me by my belief system that makes me go right and makes me go left. It's my belief system, it's an autopilot thing. And that's why you see people wake them up, they will make decisions that lead to success because of their belief system. And give people a lot of money, they will lose it because of their belief system. We're, we're having some discussions about single ladies, especially that were single, some of them in their 40s, and they were praying, fasting and praying, that they want to be married. We now discovered that almost 40% of them were dating married men. When I said that now, religious people say, hey. That's why they can't be that little married man. See, it's not the sin part that I'm talking about now. Remember, I'm talking about the action part. Let me tell you what the action part is. The sin part is another problem, but that's what I'm going to. For a single girl that wants to get married, to decide to treat a married man, this is what your belief system is. There's nobody that will marry me. There's nobody that will take care of me. This married man is at least trying and showing interest. Let me hold on to this one. Why there's nobody? They believe if as that guy was there, there was another single guy that was promising you marriage with a ring, you will never dream of that guy that's married. But the reason why you fell into that trap is that in your heart, you know, if I don't date him, I'm finished. There's nobody coming for me. Nobody's here to take care of me. Since I already know there's nobody taking care of me. 
a breaded hand is worth more than two in the market let me hold this man and be sucking him like that and listen that person will come to a church Aga, kwata, yaya, de, eh, fo, go, fo. see let me tell you something you don't understand that your prayer is based on your belief once your belief is minus anything minus multiplies is minus So I'm not even saying that either my man or that's the one I'm talking about right now. It's the fact that you look at yourself and you say there's no hope. That's what it is. That's what it is. Why do you think God asks you to give? One of the biggest things giving does for you is that giving reduce giving breaks that poverty thing in your life. Because it moves you from the I need to have that I get I get to give. It is it's a psychological shift. This is this is very challenging. And I'm saying this because the Bible says all things are possible to him that believe it. All things are possible to him that believe it. If you believe that you are the next MD of your company, there's a way you start behaving. I'm telling you you will start behaving in a certain way you will just see yourself you your dressing will change your talk will change the kind of questions you are and the reason why it's changed is because fundamentally something has changed within you this is the reason why the prayers the fasting the soul is not working because what needs to change inside has not changed inside we are building on foundations that don't exist sir. so we are fasting but the foundation is weak we are praying but the foundation is weak One couple, I met them. They've been mine for seven years. And they say they're believing God for a child. So, I had a conversation. I said, um, let's know if you're believing. Let, let you, I just wanted to have how it is. Just have a conversation. By the time I had a conversation with them, it was obvious that they were not believing what they believed. How did I know? I told the man, the man is a successful businessman. I said, if this thing collapsed, this project, what will you do? You say, ah, pastor, <laughs> If it collapsed, we'll do it again because this must work. I said, wow. You could see the belief in his capacity to raise up a school business. I said, ah, what about your child? What about the pregnancy? If this doesn't happen and his face just fell and became like this. And I said, did you notice something? When I spoke about your business, did you see how you were full of faith and energy? Because you believe it was, it was something you could do. When I spoke about childbirth, did you see how your faith fell? I said, that's why you don't have a child yet. Because in your heart, you are just trying. You know it's not, you're not going to have a child. Many people are just praying. They know they will, their prayer will not be answered. I'm telling you. They, and that's why they keep going from here to here to here. That's why they're looking for demons and fire. Because they're just hoping, let's just do something. Let's just throw all the... You know, you know why you want to throw all the method? Let's just do something. Let's just, let's just do something. 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 And what I'm saying to you is this. And this is what it is. How do you believe something? Shagun, come. How do you believe something? I want to show you. The only way Shagun believed that that was his name was over time, he got exposed to him being called that and he learned how to respond to it. The way you believe is through exposure. By changing what you're exposed to, you start believing something else. That was why in the Bible, when God wants to change people's lives, you know what he does? One of the things he does is to change their name. He tells Abraham. Abraham means the supposed father. He's not a father, but supposed father. He gave him Abraham, meaning the father of many nations. Why? Every time they called him that, it was a new reality that was put in his spirit. The reason why it's difficult to succeed in this country is not because of our GDP or oil. It's the fact that we don't have enough examples of people that succeeded without stealing. That's why you have Yao Yao people. Because the richest Nigerians are all rogues. Either they had stole money or they used stolen money. So they produce a generation. The generation looks into the future and the seed enters them and says, Ah, so you still to get to the top. Thank you. We found the way. And that's why you must be different. Listen, ladies, you must be different. You must come out as ladies that don't have to sleep around and succeed. 
so that you can stand on the altar and say nobody has seen nothing for me to get here if any man can say it i'm on social media let him come out the richest girls on instagram you know what they're doing and that's why all the people you know are doing the same thing because it's a thing about pattern nobody can seem to break away from it have you noticed once somebody in the family breaks through the door opens for that person and that's what i want god to do with your life that god will use you to open gates that other people will begin to enter through say i believe i receive it thank you sir and the people that are doing that the reason why they're doing that is that they cannot see any other way they can't So how do you believe something? You believe something because you're exposed to it. That's how you believe. You believe something because you're exposed to it. How do you change what you believe? Be exposed to something else. You will see someone that is looking for a child. All our friends are looking for children. How will you get pregnant? There's nobody you can still experience from. Oh my God. I say when God wants to change people, He changes their name. You see with the Abraham, Jacob, all those people. You know something that God, God does again wants to change people? He changed their association. Mary, He told Mary, you are finding it hard to believe you can get pregnant. Go, all of you that want a baby, go and look for pregnant people. Start staying there. You know why? When you don't do well in life, if you move to the group of people that do well in life, you'll be surprised how your conversations are contrary. Yes or no? If you see people that have good marriage and people that have bad marriages, if you sit down with them, you will imagine how their conversations are so contrary. You will wonder, are we talking about the same thing? If you see people that are making Nigeria and those that are not making Nigeria, you will be surprised how their conversations are so contrary. And the truth is this, no experience is true or not. Every experience is subjective. So, so one of my friends says, ah, nobody's coming to church. I say, our own church is packed out. I say, from 4th, we move to 5th service. I say, we're packing out everywhere. Every corner is packed out. He said, what are you telling your members? I said, the same thing you're telling them. But what we believe is different. They say, ah, hey, our members, everybody just suffering financially. I say, our church members, they are just exploding financially. Exploding financially. Exploding. Because, let me tell you something. The law of belief says, you don't see what you, you don't see what you see. You see what you believe. Every experience is subjected to what you believe. That's why someone loses money says, Yes, breakthrough has come. Someone loses money says, I'm finished. How does God change experiences? By changing our mind. How does God change the mind? What did he tell Mary? He said, Mary, you're going to get pregnant. He said, How can I get pregnant? He says, What you're going to do? Go and see your cousin Elizabeth. Do you know that? when mary went to see the cousin elizabeth mary was just a week pregnant yes or no a week pregnant most women don't even know they are pregnant in those days there's no pregnancy test elizabeth did not know she was pregnant but once they saw each other there was a drop there was infrared there was server open there was transmission of data ah, elizabeth said ah blessed is what you carry blessed is the fruit of your womb he says ah, how do you know i carry something he said ah, that has transmitted i've received a job ah, i've received the deposits it was life changing for her he was life changing for her let me tell you something there that was the proof that was listen that elizabeth was the pregnancy confirmation test for mary you didn't get it you don't know other person could confirm she was pregnant but elizabeth was the pregnancy confirmation test when elizabeth said it mary said ah i'm really pregnant if at one week someone i've not seen in months can know i'm pregnant i'm really pregnant what did god do what god did was that God took Mary to an experience that was similar to what she will have. 
and began to expose that the third way god changes people is this and i want to say what, what god does us god will give you an encounter and with that encounter he will do something that is hoping will change how you think and expand your mental capacity for a miracle so what does that mean when they were looking for bread just Christ said, why are you bothered about bread can't you remember that what i did with the five thousand and the four thousand what was he saying when i multiplied bread or did miracles i was not just providing lunch and dinner i wanted you to know that i had the capacity to meet your need he said i was hoping to change something in your thinking so when so watch this now when moses was going to go back to go back to pharaoh going back to pharaoh was a dead assignment but god wanted to change his mind what did god do god says moses take the rod throw it on the floor the rod turned into a serpent it took off he said put your hand under your armpit became repulse it took off god you know why god did those things god was using those signs and wonders to upgrade his mind so that you can know i can do the impossible he said use this to upgrade your mind the same thing happened to gideon when he was going to talk gideon he used signs and wonders to upgrade their mind the reason why you hear those testimonies and some things happen in your life is that god is hoping that he can use it to open the portals of your spirit so that you can begin to dream on a bigger dimension that's why if you attend next level prayers if you start just join the prayers don't judge them the prayers the most important part of the prayers is the testimonies you know why the testimonies are spiritual instrument for capacity enlargement that's why revelation said the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy what does that mean he said prophecies are divine probabilities and potentials I'm telling you it just opens up ladies and gentlemen the time for change has come I'm telling you you will just go <laughs> I'm, I'm this thing I'm saying the law of believing you will just go and buy wedding gown even buy used one it doesn't matter if it's new or not new be wearing it every day before you sleep. be sleeping in it let them laugh. That's how they were laughing at Sarah. When the ring shows up, you will laugh. It says, God has made me laugh. Them that laughed, laughed at me. He said, when the Lord turned around the captivity of Israel, he said, we were like them that dreamed. When this church started, and they will tell you, all people they will tell you, we were just 50. I would take paper. I would write first service, second service, third service, fourth service. I write 150, 250. I'll be writing numbers. Though. One day, someone walked in my office. What are these numbers you are writing? I said, oh. I'm just expanding my spirit. I want, I'm just getting used to it so that my spirit can conceive it. You know, then I began to write amounts. I'll just write five million, five million, five million, five million, five million, five million. Pay me five million, five million, five million, five million. I mean, I, uh, so what, the reason why is that the way some of you grew up, you don't even know what five million is in your mind. They are figures to you. They don't know what it means in your mind. And that's why God will use, it will just open a portal. So that you can come into what a transfiguration experience praise god i said praise god let's pray